First, our investigation found that the Russian government interfered in our election in sweeping and systematic fashion. Second, the investigation did not establish that members of the Trump campaign conspired with the Russian government in its election interference activities. We did not address collusion, which is not a legal term. Rather, we focused on whether the evidence was sufficient to charge any member of the campaign with taking part in a criminal conspiracy, and it was not. Third, our investigation of efforts to obstruct the investigation and lie to investigators was of critical importance. Obstruction of justice strikes at the core of the government's effort to find the truth and to hold <coughs> wrongdoers accountable. Finally, as described in volume two of our report, we investigated a series of actions by the president towards the investigation. Based on Justice Department policy and principles of fairness, we decided we would not make a determination as to whether the president committed a crime. That was our decision then, and it remains our decision today. Welcome back to Andrew Says. Remember, I wouldn't lie to you, except for maybe this once. Maybe I'm not wearing pants. Maybe I'm lying about that. You'll never know. Russian interference is still just the Facebook ads, Twitter bots, etc. Never forget that. That's not uh, Russia coming towards the borders of the United States and putting guns to people's heads. Again, no collusion. Obviously, no new info today, but you wouldn't think that based on what people are saying. And people seem to be doing the same thing on both sides, calling it a victory, calling it case closed, stuff like that. What you see behind me is Joy Reid from MSNBC. She's terrible. Terrible. Look, she's the lady who said a bunch of quote, homophobic things, and then claimed that she was hacked. Her blog from, like, the early 2000s were hacked. The deep state hacked her. The actors, the political actors in the deep state are getting into it. So you can go to my Twitter, which I believe is somewhere right here, if you want to see me mocking all of her ridiculous claims, because I like to follow people on the other side. I recommend doing that. MSNBC, CNN, stuff like that. I don't want to follow the Young Turks, so I'm sorry. <laughs> So at this point, I have to think that MSNBC and NBC are basically working for the Democrats. They just pull things. They literally pull quotes that are debunked like minutes later, hours later in the day. And they just act like they're standalone. They just act like they're the truth. Okay, and here's the first example of something that they cut out and... Joy Reid put it out there, MSNBC, NBC, all pointing towards this. This is their big claim. And here's, here's what I'm talking about. And I'd like to ask you, the reason, again, that you did not indict Donald Trump is because of OLC opinion stating that you cannot indict a sitting president, correct? Uh, that is correct. The fact that their orders by the president were not carried out, that is not a defense to obstruction of justice because the statute itself is quite broad. It says that as long as you endeavor or attempt to obstruct justice, that would also constitute a crime. I, I'm not going to get into that at this juncture. Okay, thank you. And uh, based on uh, the evidence that we have heard today, I believe a reasonable person could conclude that at least three crimes of obstruction of justice by the president occurred. We're going to hear about two additional crimes that would be the witness tamperings of Michael Cohen and Paul Manafort. All that, I yield uh, back. The only thing I want to add is that I'm going through the elements with you. Did not mean, or does not mean that I subscribe to uh, the uh, what you're trying to prove through those elements. So all the people out there on Twitter that I mentioned, MSNBC, C, uh, CNN, Joy Reid, all these people, they really held on to that first part. And if you look at Joy Reid's tweet again. This is everything, you guys. Ted Lieu said this, and Mueller said correct. that's correct, and this is everything. They ignore the end of the video where he says, I wouldn't subscribe to these ideas. They don't care. They got the clip that they want. It's really sad. And, and again, it, I, I think I've been saying this for a couple of years now, that it's either people who have no idea who they're, what they're talking about or they're purposely putting disinformation. Getting further into it today, I'd have to think that it's purposeful and not just somebody not really knowing what they're talking about. It's like, f take this part of this clip that makes us look good and ignore that part inside of you that says this is not genuine, this is disingenuous, and put it up anywhere. Anyway, 
So they held on to that first part, they ignore the end of it, but then Mueller comes back two hours later, I believe it was, and then says this. Before we go to questions, I want to add one correction to my testimony this morning. I want to go back to one thing that was said this morning by Mr. Liu, who said, and I quote, you didn't charge the president because of the OLC opinion. That is not the correct way to say it. As we say in the report, and as I said at the opening, we did not reach a determination as to whether the president committed a crime. And with that, Mr. Chairman, uh, right answer questions. So it was at this point in DNC Twitter land that they started turning on Robert Mueller. <laughs> and it's so sad, like, NB and the reason I, I mentioned MSNBC and NBC is because they're so clearly so biased and they're not willing to admit it. Okay, so now they've got this thing called a deflection tracker. So they're showing the amount of times Robert Mueller has deflected during this testimony. Here's all these ticks, here's a graph. And I'm, I really don't know who believes this stuff. This is just a guy sitting there, or a girl. Well, that's a deflection, click. Oh, there's another deflection. Probably just on things they disagree with. I mean, if you're gonna go as far to pretend through posting clips that something is being said that's not actually being said for your own benefit, for your own narrative, then who's to say that this same company isn't just being like, deflection, deflection, deflection. How is this news? <laughs> who's sitting there and just being like, you know what I need? Somebody to tell me what a deflection is. This is a hot analysis from MSNBC. So they're all saying the same thing, even on both sides. The Republicans had their own catchphrases of the day. Not everybody, of course, and I do objectively see it way more on the Democrat side with that because that could be because that's just what I'm looking at. So the Democrats had their own catchphrase. Here's one that said, game, set, and match, everybody. And it's about a Jim Jordan representative questioning Mueller on who started the whole train of information that led to the entire investigation. Here it is. Director, the FBI interviewed Joseph Mifsud on February 10th, 2017. In that interview, Mr. Mifsud lied. You point this out on page 193, volume one, Mifsud denied, Mifsud also falsely stated. In addition, Mifsud omitted. Three times he lied to the FBI, yet you didn't charge him with the crime. Excuse me, are, did you Why say not? one, I'm sorry, did you say 193? Volume one, 193. He lied three times, you pointed out in the report. Why didn't you charge him with the crime? Uh, I can't get into uh, internal deliberations with regard to who would or would not be uh, charge a lot of other people for making false statements. Let's remember this. Let's remember this. In 2016, the FBI did something they probably haven't done before. They spied on two American citizens associated with a presidential campaign, George Papadopoulos and Carter Page. With Carter Page, they went to the FISA court. They used the now famous dossier as part of the reason they were able to get the warrant and spy on Carter Page for a better part of a year. With Mr. Papadopoulos, they didn't go to the court, they used human sources. All kinds of, from about the moment Papadopoulos joins the Trump campaign, you got all these people all around the world starting to swirl around him. Names like Halper, Downer, Mifsud, Thompson, meeting in Rome, London, all kinds of places. The FBI even sent, even sent a lady posing as somebody else, went by the name Azra Turk, even dispatched her to London to spy on Mr. Papadopoulos. In one of these meetings, Mr. Papadopoulos is talking to a foreign diplomat, and he tells the diplomat, Russians have dirt on Clinton. That diplomat then contacts the FBI, and the FBI opens an investigation based on that fact. You point this out on page one of the report. July 31st, 2016, they open the investigation based on that piece of information. Diplomat tells Papadopoulos, Russians have dirt, excuse me, Papadopoulos tells a diplomat, Russians have dirt on Clinton, diplomat tells the FBI. What I'm wondering is, who told Papadopoulos? How'd he find out? I can't get into the evidentiary file. Yes, you can, because you wrote about it. You gave us the answer. Page 192 of the report, you tell us who told him. Joseph Mifsud. Joseph Mifsud's a guy who told Papadopoulos. The mysterious professor who lives in Rome and London, works and teaches in two different universities. This is the guy who told Papadopoulos. He's the guy who starts it all. And when the FBI interviews him, he lies three times 
and yet you don't charge him with a crime. So it's an interesting point by Jordan there that the guy who fed Papadopoulos information, who went to uh, the Russian GP, Fusion GPS, which is paid for by the Clintons, of course, we don't want to mention that. So it's interesting that they didn't question. And then when Mueller says, you know, we can't talk about this stuff, he says we can't talk about a lot of stuff, which is interesting whenever it's a tough question.